Good evening, welcome to Lapham Gymnasium here at Shawnee High School, where tonight WSM begins its volleyball tournament coverage as we have a Division III sectional championship game. Our opening game this evening will be the Shawnee Indians, and they are playing the Maumee Panthers. My name is Mark Scheim. My pleasure to be play-by-play. -play. Alongside my good friend Dave Bowen, Dave, it is sectional championship night. We got two pretty evenly matched teams. We do, and Mark, it's great to be your wingman. It is the second season. It's that rejuvenation. You know, it's the beginning of the season. You love it when the season starts. You love it if you're conference in a conference battle, which Shawnee was finishing as runner-up in the WBL. And then you have that rejuvenation, that new life of the second season. It's win or go home. That makes it that much more challenging, knowing what could happen. But you love the opportunity, and that's what these girls are faced with tonight. Let's take a quick look, Dave, at the Maumee Panthers. They will be on the right side of your screen here today. Both teams are wearing white jerseys today and dark pants and dark uniforms. So let's look at the Maumee Panthers first. They're 7-7, seven, seven, and they come in here out of the 7-7 seven seven in the Northern Buckeye Conference. They're 9-13 overall. And they are coming in here from that Northern Buckeye League Conference. Yeah, they finished fifth in league play. Head coach Lindsey Vanette in her seventh season, 92 and 82. The number six seed in the Kaleida District, uh, which this is a part of, obviously. 32 and 44 in all sets. That sort of uh, is a indicator that they're a little bit under 500. They come in challenged a little bit. They've lost four of their last five matches. So. Again, second season, new life. Ladies, let's push that aside. Let's just play and stay in the now. Dave, you mentioned uh, Shawnee was second uh, in the uh, Western Buckeye League to the Ottawa Glendorf Lady Titans in a match that we did on WSN earlier this year. They're coming in 16-6, and six, and they are 8-1 in conference play. Yeah, Brooke Hutchins has done an outstanding job with this squad this year. Lost a lot of senior firepower last year. And to come in at the WBL and finish as runner-up with a young squad, the future's obviously very, very bright for this Shawnee Indian contingent. They're the number one seed in this district. 47-22 and 22 in all sets, and they come in winning their last two and three of their last four. They are on a high note. They have momentum. Again, second season. Want to carry that in to tonight's match and just keep digging. Uh, the winner of this, this is Division Three. This is a sectional championship matchup. The winner goes on next week to play in Kaleida. That will be at 6 p.m. on Tuesday evening. The finals of this particular division uh, are, is at Kaleida, and that is on Thursday next week on the 24th. That's also at 6 p.m. If you look at our officiating crew this evening on our stand tonight, our R1 is Ann Ellerbrock, our R2 is Stephen McCray. Our two line judges tonight are Russell Brandon and Daniel Hunt. These two teams tried to find some commonalities between them. They do not have any common opponents, Mark. And they have only, since 2007, that's how far Max Preps goes back, they have only faced each other twice. Mommy has won both contests. So I don't think anyone in the gym might even re recall those matches back in 19 and 20. Uh, I take that back. I'm sure there <laughs> are a few people. But Mommy has the 2-0 series lead. Uh, Shawnee would like to get a W tonight. As Dave said, they played twice before in the tournament, 2019 and 2020. And in both of those contests, the Maumee Panthers came out ahead. Shawnee will serve first. That will be number nine, Sydney Burris. They're on the left side of your screen. Their libero wears a black jersey. That's Maggie Jordan, if that helps you. And here's our first serve of the game. Hit tipped over and hit tipped to the back row. Played by Maggie Jordan. That kill was going to go to Kennedy King, and the first point will go to... The Maumee Panthers. Kennedy King picks up her 118th kill on the season. She's third in that category for Maumee. Number 10, Mia Mitchell will come in and play the front row. She replaces Lydia Christensen, who is in the back row. And our opening server will be number four. That's the setter. And her name is Brooke Kwiatkowski. And the left-hander will serve. Here's Hutchins. Nope, it is Hutchins. Brooke Hutchins goes off a set. Carly Hutchins, excuse me, goes off a set. And we are tied at one. Carly announced this this week, Dave, was a first-team all-conference player as a junior at 5'9". Yeah, very versatile player. We'll see her attacking from the left side, like right there. And she will also set for Shawnee. Sammy Reddick will serve that ball. This one's hit across. That's also by King. Hutchins winds up. Her shot is blocked. 
Coming back off of the kill by Kennedy King. 117 kills on the season. Yeah, that's her 32nd block of the season, Mark. She's second on the team in that category. Does a nice job reading that one off of Hutchins' hand. And she just served to Jordan. Tipped over and tipped over a little bit too far right into Autumn Draper's wheelhouse. And she puts it away, and Maumee will be up 3-1 early. Autumn Draper with the dunk over the net. She leads um, Maumee in the kill category, 236. That one was set on the table right there, and she finished it off. Burris sets. Hutchins hits out of the middle and got right on the line. Carly Hutchins makes it 3-2, Maumee. Does a nice job getting up in the air. I love where we're sitting here at Shawnee. Yeah, we have some issues with our up official, but otherwise it's great being down here at floor level, Mark. Addie Krieger serves. Set and unable to get to it and play it over was Lydia Christensen. And Shawnee has knotted it up at three early on here in our opening set. And Addie Krieger will serve again. Set by Kwiatkowski, tipped over. Hutchins, that was a remarkable shot, Dave. That was way back behind the 10-foot line, and she timed it perfectly. And behind her as well. You're right, Mark. That was a tough play right there, but you want to see that at this time of the season uh, where you're able to execute that one. But, yeah, she came all the way back from behind her right shoulder, got on top of the ball, and pushed it right over the net for the kill. Third serve for Addie Kriegel in this rotation. Ball was hit by Janot. And Hutchins again. Nope, over, over pass that time. She couldn't get to it. The point goes to Maumee, and we're tied at four on our Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard. Had an opportunity to talk to Coach Hutchins before the match. Consistency an issue. We, we've seen it already a little bit here. They've had a couple passes up there where um, Mommy's been able to take advantage of the overpass. Hutchins and missed the sideline. She tried to go down the right sideline and missed it. It's 5-4, Mommy. Again, everything right technically except the contact on the ball. She high pointed it well, but uh, had her thumb up, needed that thumb down to bring it in instead of trying to go down the line that goes out of bounds. This set will go to Liz Kinnear. Set in the middle to Draper. Hutchins tips it over. Good play by the libero green. Back set this time, Brianna Upshaw got that one and Gianna got a point off a blocker. We're tied at five. Gianna Upshaw, the 5'10 freshman out there. We saw her in warmups really making great contact. She hit that one hard, but we've seen it with more velocity, velocity, and I'm sure we will yet tonight, but she gets the point on the kill right there. Here's Carly Hutchins to serve. That means she will become a setter now from the back row as that shot goes into the net for Maumee at 6'5", Indians. Unforced air on Maumee's side of the net. Carly Hutchins to serve again. Just tipped over that time by Rain Hurt. Here's Hutchins. That's a legal kill from behind the 10-foot line. Great dig by Green, the libero. Here's a free ball over. Burris will set out in the middle for Upshaw. And Gianna puts it away, 7-5. It's already tough when a middle hitter comes at you and you don't know which way she's going to go. But Upshaw with that left hand, it's something you just don't see every day, and she's able to Knocked that one off the block. Set out of the middle to Draper. She pushes it over. Carly Hutchins was able to get a couple of hands on it, but couldn't get it up in the air high enough for a teammate to use. It's 7 6. Nicely done there by Mommy to get the kill. Here's Mia Mitchell back into the game, and Mia will become the server as Lydia Christensen takes a seat. Burris will set. Draper with that block. Upshaw hits it through a blocker. It's touched and goes out of bounds. Upshaw out of the middle again. Her teammates know where she's at when she's on the front row. She's going to rotate out of the set right now. But, yeah, she's on a string with Emily McKissick. Emily will play in the back row, and 
When it's the time to rotate to the front, then Upshaw takes her place. McKissick serve, set, Draper. Jordan made a good play as a libero. Josie Hutchins will hit that ball, and the point goes to Maumee. It is 8-7. Nobody has led by more than two in our opening set. Yeah, it's going back and forth. Very exciting volleyball here in the early going of set number one. Kirsten Green will serve in her purple libero jersey. Burris will back set. And that ball goes off the net on Liz Kinnear's attempt. And it becomes a four contact thing. And we go back to a tie to eight. Unforced air on Shawnee's side of the net. Burris sets again from behind the 10 foot line. Carly Hutchins hit it into the net. Mommy up one. We are definitely on the teeter-totter, going back and forth in the early going with the score, Mark. Here's Green again, the senior libero. Hutchins again, and rolled that one over. That was pretty. It sure was. It, it just seems like Dave, no matter where she is out on the floor, they're trying to set Carly virtually every time. Yeah, it's like they know who their go-to person is. She is the glue girl for this Shawnee Indian squad, and they are all on the same page and trying to get her the action. Serve does not make it across the net. 10-9, our Lee's famous recipe chicken scoreboard. Back in to serve is uh, number five, Julia Kucher. She and uh, number eight, Sydney Janot, trade spots on the floor as the rotation takes place. This hits by Josie Hutchins. And what? Mommy in the net. It was. Thank you, Dave. So Josie Hutchins is going to get that kill. She says, hey, big sister, watch this. She had great velocity on that one. And on the dig, it was coming over as a free ball, but Mommy was in the net. Sydney Burris on serve. That was blocked in the front row by Kriegel. Good play by the libero. Cross court Hutchins. She has to play her own hit. From behind the 10-foot line, that's Maggie Jordan. And it got up into the ceiling. 11-10 Indians. Coach Van, that's got to be real pleased with how her girls are blocking at the net. They are playing some real good defense at the net. She needs them on that wall. She wants them on that wall, to paraphrase a few good men. Oh, that's one of my favorite ones. There you go. A big hit that time, going right down the line is Sydney Janot. We're tied at 11. Yeah, Sydney Janot, dynamite down the line. That's 150 kills for her on the season, second on the team in that category. They do a nice job of going to her right there, and she does not disappoint. Here's Kwiatkowski to serve. Burris will set. That one's hit over by Kriegel. Just free balled over that time. Here's Hutchins, and Carly goes down the line. Here's it's your line, and I'll raise you one. Carly Hutchins. 12-11. That's Carly's fifth kill of the set. Sammy Reddick will enter the play, and in the back row. Also entering play in the front row is Gianna Upshaw, and that will be our first ace. 13-11, that's our first ace of the game. Redding 16th ace on the season, and I've seen more aces this year on the soft serve than I have in the previous two, three years combined. That ball was hit over by Janot, and then off the tape and the block and able to play it with the Indians, so it's 13-12. Janot very effective up here, left front, two kills. Kennedy King will serve this ball. Burris has to track it down, and Upshaw goes to the other corner this time. It makes it 14-12. Her fourth kill of the set. Well, when you've got Carly Hutchins standing side by side with Gianna Upshaw, you've got two really talented hitters in the front row. Yeah, you have options all over the place. Sidney Burris functioning as a setter in that situation. Kriegel sets, uh, serves, I mean, that was blocked by Draper. Autumn Draper. 
That's her 34th block on the season. Her timing right there was impeccable. Just did an outstanding job, Mark, of making the read. She wasn't at the net and jumped. She jumped from six feet behind the net, coming to the net, read the ball, gets the point. Here's Sydney Janot, the junior. And she served out. 15-13. Played 28 points, Dave. Nobody's even thought about a timeout because it's been so closely yeah. contested. That's what I was wondering. Right now, maybe momentum is swinging Shawnee's way here up to see if they can put a little run together, force Coach Vanette to take that first timeout. Good serve from Hutchins. And now she gets a kill attempt from behind the 10-foot line. Oh, good job by Draper playing out of the net and doing so legally. Here's Burris will set again from behind the 10-foot line. Christensen hits it. Burris sets up Kinnear. 16-13, the first time either team has led by three in the opening set. Kinnear's 50th kill on the season. So obviously you have Carly Hutchins and Gianna Upshaw, but it's nice when you have those complimentary players who take advantage when they get the opportunity. Draper has to roll shot it over. Upshaw got a block at the net, and it was pushed out of bounds. 17-13. Great read and by here Maggie is our George. first timeout. Yep. Dave, it'll go to the Maumee Panthers. Shawnee up four. You're watching High School Volleyball on WOSN. We're back at Lapham Gymnasium here at Shawnee. Our presenting sponsor for this District 3 sectional final game is Wapak and Ford. View our new and pre-owned inventory at wapakford.net or visit us at 613 North Dixie Highway in Wapak, Canada. And our scoreboard today is brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Located in Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Locally owned and operated, Lee's is not just famous for chicken. We're famous for catering, too. Shawnee up four, biggest lead of our opening set, and Carly Hutchins will serve again. Coach Vanette takes that timeout, Mark. I think this has probably been a theme of Mommy. You know, we don't obviously see them very often, but that consistency within a set down four, I really like the timeout call right there. Hutchins with a serve to the libero. Green tipped over by Draper. And here's Hutchins again. Draper pushes it. Hutchins a third time, and she rolls it right to the middle of the floor, 18-13. Took a little off of that one, but Carly Hutchins, our viewers can see the ball, the rotation on the ball. It's got that forward spin. It's like a drop ball if you're a pitcher in baseball, and uh, she's really been effective with it from that back row, that roll shot. And she serves again. A good serve. Difficult angle on the shot at the front row by Hurt. And then it goes long and out of bounds. It finally breaks the run. It is 18-14. And with that, looks like Mia Mitchell will enter. The 5-2 junior to play in the back row. Mia has 17 aces this year. The winner of this match will get the winner of two Western Buckeye League teams, Wapak Kaneda and Salina, that will be coming up after this match. It's 1914 on WOSN. And let's see, that brings Emily McKissick will enter. Emily will play in the back row and serve at the same time that Josie Hutchins comes in to play in the front row. Overpass. And boy, put that right where Josie Hutchins can use it, and she wisely waited until the ball crossed the plane of the net. Gets her second kill of the set and pushes that lead to six. Shawnee looking to run away and hide here in set number one. 2014, up six are the Indians. Draper, she had some side spin on that, got it to curveball down, makes it 20 to 15. Yeah, she mishit that one. Her nonverbals after it went down were like, oh, I didn't hit it right, but I got the point. Hey, let's take it, you know. It's a line drive in the paper tomorrow, Mark. Kirsten Green serves, and she does so to McKissick. Hutchins off a block. 
21 was, 15. Yeah, no roll shot to that Not one. That one was so. straight velocity at the net, blasted through the block, which again, early in the set, we saw Mommy really effective at the net with her blocking. But Carly Hutchins gets the point there. Addie Kriegel entered as the serve is done by Maggie Jordan. Maggie was third team, Western Buckeye League announced this week. Set. Josie Hutchins tips, and it was, well, it fell on the side of the Shawnee Indians. I don't know if it was touched or not. Yeah, I don't think so. And uh, Josie tried to hang in the air as long as she could, just not quite on the same page right there with her setter. That was a little bit more uh, up in the air than she expected and tried to push it over, unfortunately, for four hits on uh, Kusher and Janot enter. Shawnee side. Julia serves from the back row. That's overpassed and overpassed in a bad spot because Kennedy King put it straight down at 21-17. King's second kill of the set. Mommy gets a point here. Coach Hutchins has got to think about a T.O. Set. Josie Hutchins off a blocker. That was touched. 22-17. No need to worry on that one as Josie comes through with another kill from the front left. And Sydney Burris will serve. Set out of the middle, hit to the back row, and went a little bit long on the effort by Kennedy King. Right idea, Coach. A lot of open areas there in the back corners for Mommy, but unable to... Drop it in there, Shawnee with the point. 23-17. Burris will set, and sets Carly Hutchins. 24-17, Shawnee a point away from taking the opening set on our Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard. Carly's eighth kill of the set. Sydney Burris trying to serve this one out. She of 31 aces this season, and she got another one. And that means her team will win the opening set at 25-17. Set two coming up after this. Watching high school tournament volleyball on WOSN. Our presenting sponsor today is Wapakoneta Ford. View our new and pre-owned inventory at wapakford.net or visit us at 613 North Dixie Highway in Wapak, Canada. Mark Shine, Dave Bowen. David was 11-11, and then Shawnee took over, went 14-6 to close out the opening set. They found rhythm, and it was so obvious that that rhythm rotated around number three, Carly Hutchins. Her teammates do an outstanding job, as we mentioned in set number one, finding her, and she doesn't let them down. Yeah. Very impressive. But the complementary players did their job as well. That rhythm doesn't come from one player. It's got to come from all six that are on the floor at that particular moment. Shawnee put it into play, and they came away with set number one. Dave, you mentioned earlier in our telecast we haven't seen Maumee before, but I look at Autumn Draper coming with 235 kills, and she did not have a lot of opportunities in the opening set either. Yeah, that's the converse of the situation, Mommy. They've got to go to their horses, proverbially speaking, and right now Draper needs to see the ball more in a position to give it a nice whack than she did there in first set. We're pleased to announce new pricing for the WSN streaming service for only $8 per month. You can watch WSN from anywhere at any time. Sign up today at app.wsn.tv. Also available on Roku and on Apple TV. And now our second set service will be by Maumee first, and that means number four, the setter, Brooke Kwiatkowski. So if you're the Maumee Panthers, it's a clean slate. Let's get back at it, girls. Let's win this set. Tip out of the middle. That's Addie Krieger, Kriegel. And free ball over. Hutchins played it. And she gets a shot from behind the 10-foot line. It's blocked in the, in the middle by King. This hits by Rudisell. Leah Rudisell puts her team up 1-0. Third on the team in kills. Give her 116 on the season now. Again, Mommy there at the net. They just turned, didn't turn their shoulders into the middle of the floor. And the ball went out, out of bounds. Burris serves. That's hit off the top of the net. Good diving play that time by McKissick. That hit off the antenna. 
The kill attempt was by Sidney Janot, and it went off the antenna, and it's 2-0. Here's Burris again. That hit was by Kent King. Jordan will set. Diving attempt by the libero, Kirsten Green, but too much Carly Hutchins. It's 3-0. Nine, this nine. is not starting out the way Maumee no, wanted. No, no. They have got to reestablish, and Coach Vanette's going to have to think about a timeout in the early going. But they get a point there. Free one right when Shawnee had their foot on their throat. Again, proverbially speaking, they give Maumee some life here in the early going of set two. Service error means Audrey Wagner will serve. She did not play in the opening set. Hutchins. Carly Hutchins makes it 4-1. Dave, I was about to say that number six, Autumn Draper, has rotated to the front row. This is when Maumee needs to try to make some points, and Hutchins takes care of the opening set, or serve with that anyway. Yeah, she takes care of it, but a nice set there by Sydney mm -hmm. Burris. Put it in a position where Carly Hutchins could do what she does. Nicely done by Burris as well. With Sammy Reddick to serve. Block. We'll give that kill. Sydney Janot, that's her fourth kill of the match. I'm really impressed with Brooke Kwiatkowski with yep. her back setting. She's doing a nice job. Seems though she's had to do a lot of traveling on that first pass to give her team a good set. Here's a set out of the middle to Hutchins, and she gets another kill. It's 5-1. Kwiatkowski that Dave mentioned a moment ago, where's number four? She is a 5-6 sophomore, and she had... 461 assists in 76 sets before this evening. Here's Did Jordan you do the math on that? How many sets? Uh, <laughs> I have to get my phone out. The yeah, yeah, I will. Miss. Yeah. It did on the kill attempt by Lydia Christensen went long, and it is 6-1, 6-2. Excuse me. Served in the middle of the floor. Good diving effort that time by Draper, but we're going to get a free ball for Shawnee to use. And that's block. Give that one to Autumn Draper. That's block number 35 on the season, second on the night. Again, she reads it very, very well. And that was Carly Hutchins coming at her. We've seen her have many a successful kill already this evening, but... Draper on the stop. Taryn Pyle will enter the match to serve. Hutchins goes cross court right to Pyle. Draper tips it over. Burris will set Hutchins. Carly gets another point. It's 7 3. So we see Carly have a, a, a kill attempt on the right side, and then she gets the kill on the left side with the changeup. She's all over this floor. Carly Hutchins to serve. 50 aces for her this season. Just a really solid all-around player. What a play in the middle. Brooke Kwiatkowski had not done that yet. She's a front row player right there. and She's rather than set the ball, she took it over herself and got a point for her team. Yeah, great, great decision. Great feel right there by Kwiatkowski to get the point for her team. Jordan sets. Upshaw hits to the libero green, and she gets a point for her team. That's Upshaw's fifth kill of the match. And again, you mentioned Maggie Jordan being third team. She is also one of the, if not the, most improved player on this Shawnee squad in talking with Coach Hutchins. She said, oh, I got a lot of girls who've gotten better, but if you're making me pick one, I got to go with Maggie Jordan. She's really had a great season. Shawnee is a little bit confused about whose service it is. I think they got that straightened out. And in the process of doing so, Lita Rudisil will enter. She will replace Sammy Reddick. Upshaw serves, and Gianna gets it to the back row. King hits out of the middle. Number 12, who just came in, Brickner. McKenzie hit that one over. It is 9-4. Her 36th kill on the season. Again, some good complimentary action up front by these Shawnee Indians, taking advantage of their opportunities when they get them. 
Jan Upshaw service long. It's 9-5. You know, we haven't mentioned Kirsten Green back there in the purple shirt for Mommy, but she's had an outstanding match up to this point, really doing what you need a libero to do, be a defensive specialist back there. Anything close, she's doing a great job of digging it up, giving her setter an opportunity to push the ball to a hitter. Kirsten Green is a senior with 242 digs before tonight in her libero position. Hutchins from behind the 10-foot line, and nobody there to get it. The pass couldn't get to Brooke Kwiatkowski, and she dove for it a little bit late, and it's 10-5 now. 13 kills on the night for Carly Hutchins. She's going to need to ice down after this oh. one. She's doing a lot of swinging. This will be a free ball. See how Shawnee uses this one. They use it by putting the ball in Addie Kriegel's possession. That's off a block. Hutchins from behind the 10-foot line. That spot right there has been good for her tonight. Good save, good dig in the back row. Hit by Rudisil. And the setter has to just free ball it over. It's going to be up in the rafters. Hutchins makes a good play on it. Burris free balls it across. Yeah, both teams playing with the medal up there. Good tip to an open spot by Kennedy King. Makes it 10-6. Kennedy's third kill on the night. That was a great volley by both yeah. teams, Mark. Mommy comes away with the much-needed point to cut the deficit to four. Kwiatkowski to serve with the left hand. Hutchins. 11-6. Sidney Burris does a great job right there with the bump set. Usually, uh, you want your setter to get underneath it. She couldn't quite get there, but again, a great bump set for Hutchins and another point for the Indians. And Sydney serves. Block. Carly Hutchins there. So is Addie Kriegel. It is 12 6, and we're looking at a mommy timeout. The score's doubled up. Second set. You're watching High School Tournament Volleyball on WOSN. Back at Lapham Gymnasium, our scoreboard tonight is brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, located in Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Well, we own and operate Lee's is not just famous for chicken, we're famous for catering to 12-6 Indians. Got them doubled up, Dave. Got them doubled up, and Shoney just has gone with a plethora of hitters here in the early going. The blockers from Mommy, yeah, they're solid, but if they don't know where the ball's going to be set to, it's been, become very challenging for them. I like the timeout by Coach Vanna. I like the nonverbals of her squad in the huddle. Great eye contact, locked in. That timeout will only be as good as this play because you want to get a point coming out of it. Let's see what Mommy does. Burris serves to the back row. King will hit. Nope, pushes it over with two hands, and Burris will set. Carly Hutchins dips it over, but right there to get the block is number 12, Brianna Lanky. That's her fourth block on the season. It a seems like a, by that Coach Vanette is going down the roster. She's yes. looking for somebody yeah. to try to give him a spark, and she got one right there from Lanky. That's blocked, but blocked out of bounds. Lanky was up in the air to get it, but knocked it out of bounds instead. It's 13-7. That's one of the pieces of volleyball that coaches just love. When a hitter gets a block that goes against her, then they come back the very next point, and they don't let up at all, and they blast it through the block. That's where momentum is established. Carly Hutchins does it right there. Sammy Reddick, 5'5", five, five junior serves. Draper hit that one. Hutchins goes up, hits it through two blockers, and it was blocked, but blocked out of bounds. 14-7, Indians. The winner of this will play next week in Kaleida on Tuesday night against the winner of our second match tonight. That is also from the Western Buckeye League, Salina and Wapak Draper off a block. Good play in the back row by Reddick, but it got up into the rafters and came back down. 
Yeah, she did a nice job, did Sammy Reddick right there with the one-arm bandit, got it up in the air. But, again, we do have somewhat of a low ceiling here at Shawnee. It went off of the Raptors, came down really quick. No one could get to it. Sydney Janot, a junior, will serve. That's in the Raptors, too. Well, <laughs> I didn't hit anything. Didn't hit anything. Went through them. <laughs> and I think we stepped across the line. Tough situation yeah. right there for Shawnee. All out of pure hustle. You can step on the line, cannot put your foot entirely over the line. Off the top of the net. Carly Hutchins. That didn't hit anything. Went over. Just dumped over by Burris. Draper and... Somebody's in there. Yeah, I think it was Draper, wasn't it? Yes. It was. Autumn Draper's follow-through took her hand into the net, and that will be a violation. 15-9, Indians. Maggie Jordan to serve. Hits it to her counterpart, Kirsten Green. Hutchins. Winds up and nails it off of Lydia Christensen. First contact for Mommy. It's just been a challenge at times right there. Kwiatkowski, she had to go over on two because she was so tight to the net. Got it over. Her facial expression was, oh, I got lucky there. But then uh, Shawnee came away with the point. Burris sets. Hutchins out of the middle. Hits it off the block by Draper. But it fell on the side of the Maumee Panthers, and we will get another Maumee timeout. Shawnee up 17-9 in the second set. You're watching High School Tournament Volleyball on WOSN. The Three Wise Men Podcast. You can join Danny Holbrook, Miles Holiday, and Nate Garlock week as they break down local football matchups, talk Buckeye football, and discuss sports throughout Ohio. It's a great podcast, Mark, and uh, I encourage our viewers to find it on their streaming service or social media, wherever they like to pick up their podcast. We both have subbed in, but they've kicked us out. We yeah, we're been not wise. wise. Yeah, no, that's right. No, no, that's, we're yeah. just not wise enough to be with the wise men. No, we can't make the A team. But I am wise enough to see Shawnee up eight with Maggie Jordan serving, and Mommy has used both of their timeouts in the set. And they went to Autumn Draper, and Deanna Hutchins said, nope. Up, Johanna Upshaw said nope and sent it back at 18-9. Gianna Upshaw, led leader in blocks for Shawnee. That makes number 31 on the season right there. Played it well, and she was excited. Is Rightly that, so. That is what you would call a talented freshman with a bright future. Absolutely. And again, as we've mentioned already, this whole Shawnee squad, yeah, they're going to lose some valuable seniors but there's a nucleus of freshmen, sophomores, and juniors right here that are going to be back. This team is going to be reckoned with not only yet the remainder of this season, but definitely next year. Taryn Pyle serves. Draper gets it blocked in the front row by Brickner and then hit it out. That transition for Mommy has been challenging. Transition from defense, first contact into offense. Shawnee at the net that time, they block it, and then in that transition the second time, Mommy goes long. Ooh. And that overpass went right to the front road and somebody named Gianna Upshaw who used her left hand and made an emphatic statement. Picks up her sixth kill of the match. 2010, Shawnee doubled up here in the second set. Yeah, that was room service right there for Upshaw. Upshaw gets back to back as she gets that one. More conventional, yeah, yep. more conventional that time, but the same result. The 5'10 freshman high points that one. No defense on the other side of the net's going to pick that one up. Too much velocity. Back set. Draper tips it over and she gets a point out of it. She's not been able to score much with the hard stuff. That time she just kind of tipped it over and yeah. got it to a good spot. Yeah, she brought the change up there, and it works effectively. Kirsten Green, 12 aces for her from her libero spot. Hutchins sets. 
And Upshaw puts that one away. This has kind of become her, her time here lately. It has, and the neat thing there, again, we're down here at courtside. Gianna was calling for that one. She wanted that one. She's in a rhythm right now. And what do they do? They rotate her out. Well, she, she <laughs> That's went, part of volleyball. Though. She was headed to the back row, and Emily <laughs> yep. McKissick took her yep. place. Yep. That's tipped over by the setter, Kwiatkowski. And Hutchins goes, oh. Oh, I thought we had a pancake yeah, right too. there. Really good effort in the back row yes. by Janot, but the point still goes the way of Shawnee. Makes it 23-11 as they're in close to closing out set number two. Burris will set Hutchins again, and that time she hit it long, 23-12. When you're behind the 10-foot line, back row attack, you're, you're thinking, I can hit this as hard as I want to because I'm not going to hit it long. Well, Carly Hutchins does so right there. Her typical ball has some top spin it sure on does, it, and that yeah. one didn't, so uh -huh. that's why it didn't dive on the back line. And, oh, they free ball saved it, but at least it Kept the ball in the air. Correct. Good play by McKissick. Here's Hutchins again, and that time it's short. And she tried to make the adjustment. Now she's thinking and uh, analysis, paralysis by analysis a little bit for Carly. Just, just play. Let it go. 23-13. Shawnee. Coucher will serve. That's tipped over for a point by Leah Rudisil, and Shawnee is a point away from taking the second set. Yeah, nice athletic play by Rudisil right there because that one was up against the net, and she just sort of fist hit it back across, and it worked for her. You saw Hutchins doing some running around, and she was out of position for a moment and would have been out of rotation but got there in time. That's a good block at the net. We're going to chalk that one up to Kennedy King at 24-14. That's her second block of the night for a point. Gives her 33 on the season. Kwiatkowski to serve. Good serve from the left-hander. And that allows an overpass to take place as Sydney Genot puts it away at 24-15. That's her fifth kill of the night. Again, not a Clean play right there. And obviously, it looks like Shawnee's going to win this set, but they're giving momentum up a little bit here in the late going of set number two. And that is set number two right there as the serve doesn't cross the net. That service error means the Indians will win set two, 25-15, and take a two-set to none lead to set number three. Back in a moment, you watch the high school tournament volleyball on WOSN. Division three volleyball from Shawnee High School. Our presenting sponsor tonight is Wapakoneta Ford. You are new and pre-owned inventory at WapakonetaFord.net and visit us at 613 North Dixie Highway in Wapakoneta. Mark Shine, Dave Bowen. Dave, every time it seems like Maumee's about to make a bit of a run, Shawnee just steps on, their, on the throat and says, nope, we're taking over. Yeah, they're doing a nice job of playing collectively together as a whole and as we uh, witnessed this week, the WBL came out with their postseason honors, and they got it right with mm -hmm. Shawnee. Carly Hutchins, first teamer. Gianna Upshaw, second teamer. And third teamer, uh, Maggie Jordan and Addie Kriegel, honorable mention. Those, those three ladies, uh, first, second, and third teamers, Carly, Gianna, and Maggie, they have been integral in tonight's match, and I'm sure it's a microcosm of the whole season. And as you have said earlier today, the only graduate in that group, Maggie Jordan, will graduate. So you've got a first-team player in Carly Hutchins and a second-team player in Gianna Upshaw returning next year along with some other valuable pieces. Well, let's see if Maumee can put some type of run together. In set number two, they scored just four points on service. So that certainly would be something that Coach Fanat would like to see them improve on. I think Shawnee will serve first in this set. Yeah, it's imperative that they get off to a good start. They can't fall behind early because then it's just going to be, oh, no, here we go, uh, same song, second verse. They have got to dig in and make some noise early in the set 
and then fight the rest of the way because they know if they do throw a punch at Shawnee here in the early going, Shawnee's going to counter punch, but they got to put themselves in that position just to see what happens, see where we're at, ladies. And I'm sure that was the theme of Coach Van Ett's huddle. First serve for Shawnee in set number three will be Sidney Burris. Number nine will tee it up and serve. Here's a set. I'm not sure whether it was blocked or whether it just didn't get over. Either way, Sydney Janot can't score for her team, and Shawnee's up 1-0. Yeah, did not get over the net. Diving play by Green. And then the pass is not effective, and it's 2-0. So everything we said can't happen for Mommy yeah. has and here in the early going. To Shawnee's credit, we're not going to let you think you have a Correct. chance in yep. set number yep. three. We're going to come right out and fire away. Here, that's dumped over. Good play by Kwiatkowski. Hutchins hits. And we have a Panther in the net. Looks like it was number nine, and that would be Kennedy King. It's 3-0. Just caught Coach Vanett looking at the scoreboard. She knows this can happen if they're going to put themselves in a the position. Overpass. But Malmy keeps it alive, and Hutchins hit it. Out. Went down the line and missed it. 3 1. If you're curious about Malmy, they're out of the Northern Buckeye Conference. The winner of that conference this year was Lake. Lake was 13 and 1. Eastwood was 12 and 2. Then Oak Harbor, Otsego, and Maumee came in at 7-7. Seven and seven. And you look at their schedule. They've played a lot of D1 and uh -huh. D2 schools. Carly Hutchins will hit to the back row this time. That's roll shot over by King. Dumped over by Burris. King again. That was not King. That was Sidney Janot. 4-1. Reddick enters, so does John Upshaw. And Reddick will serve. Kwiatkowski sets. That ball was hit by Janot, sent back. Burris will set again. Upshaw out of the middle. Janot for the second time. Hutchins, and that got into the tape and did not get over. It becomes four hits at 4-2. Mommy is so much more effective, and every team is, I know, Mark, but when their front line gets a hand on the ball at the, at the net on the uh, kill attempt by Shawnee, just gives her back row a better opportunity to make a good pass. Hutchins will tip it over. It rolls along the net. Jordan makes a good play. And Upshaw has to tip it over. Draper finds an open spot. There's Upshaw. And Upshaw again. And hits it off of two blockers for a point. Kill number nine for Gianna Upshaw. 5-2 as Maggie Jordan retreats to serve. Maggie Jordan. 33 aces for her this year from her libero spot. That was overpassed, and with that, Carly Hutchins waited until the ball got in the plane of the net and then put it away. Eight, Carly, six, Hutchins, Carly Hutchins picks up her 20th kill of the night, Mark. And we're really only into the early parts of set three. I know. I was like, man, if this would go five sets. Tipped over by Draper. Jordan sets Hutchins. That point will go to Sydney Janot. Makes it 6 3. Kill number six for Sydney Janot. Here's Sydney to serve now, the junior. 45 aces for her this year. That's second on the team to Kwiatkowski. And she served it long. And that's pretty impressive. 57 aces for Brooke Kwiatkowski and 45 for Sydney Janot. That's a lot of free That's points right of, there. Kennedy King setting in there at 35. 35, yep. yes. 
But not many tonight, Dave. Not many tonight. Draper hits it hard to Jordan. That might be her most emphatic hit of the evening at 7-4. Yeah, she's the leading killer, if you will. Put that in quotation marks for Mommy is Autumn Draper. And right there, that short set. I love the yeah. short set in volleyball. It's almost indefensible, but it's poetry in motion. Move over, Mr. Shakespeare. In order for it to be effective, the setter and the hitter, they have to be on the same page. Sharon Pyle will serve that ball, and Upshaw hits it off of Christensen. And it's 8-4. Eight, eight, Kill number 10 for Gianna. It seems like uh, once we get into set number two, Shawnee has had him doubled up virtually all the time. Yeah, Mommy, again, I, I like the nucleus of what we see out there. Just you can tell why they've been a 500 club or a little under this year. Just, just at times missing some fundamental play. Yeah. Draper has to roll it over. Hutchins from behind the 10-foot line. And that ball is hit in. Christensen put it in the back corner right in front of the line, Judge. Yeah, Lydia Christensen. We haven't heard much from her tonight, but she goes to eight ball corner pocket right there, Mark. Cuts the lead to three. Kirsten Green. That kill attempts by Liz Kinnear. And then just... Tapped over by Christensen, she gets back-to-back -back points. She brings the change up and finds the open area on Shawnee's side of the net. The open wood, if you will. That's her third kill on the night. 8-6. Good serve. Oh, and Christensen's eyes lit up big on the overpass, then she hit it into the tape at 9-6. Yeah, great serve by Emily McKissick. She would not let that one go down. She fought for it. I know she free-balled it over, but, man, that's about all she could do with that soft serve. Mackenzie Brickner, senior server. That kill attempt came from behind the 10-foot line by Sydney Janot. And we have not seen yeah. Mommy do some back row attacking throughout the match uh, very often, but right there, Sydney Janot does it successfully. Mommy, a little yeah. bit of fight here. I was thinking just the same thing with that. Seemed to spark him up a little bit mm -hmm. as Audrey Wagner served. Yeah. Good play in the back row by Green. Yes. Set. And a little miscommunication, just free balled over by Jordan. That's blocked. It was blocked by Burris, but went out of bounds, and we're at 9-8. The Panthers do what you should do. As you said, a, a mental error, miscommunication, confusion on Shawnee's side of the net. They look like a tourist trying to navigate the New York subway right there. Trying to tie it up. Ball me. And Brooke Kwiatkowski went up in the air with the idea she was going to get a kill, but the ball was so close to the net, she was trying to avoid the net. And in the process, missed the ball, too. It's 10-8, Shawnee. Yeah, she tried to go with her left hand with her right hand close to the net, unable to pull that one away. And, yeah, the error occurs, and there's an ace. Yeah, we've not had many of those by either team this, this evening, but Sydney Burris just chalked one up. Sydney had 31 aces. She was second on the Indian team this year. And she just free balled that one over, kind of a self-defense thing. That one's blocked. Right there was Liz Kinnear. Makes it 12-8. Shawnee reestablishing control in set three. That's Liz's 26th block on the season. Second in that category for Shawnee behind Upshaw. Burris hits it to the back row. Was that touched? It was not. Saw some hands up there, Dave. Yep. Wasn't sure whether it was touched or not. Trailing by five after making a little bit of a run. Mommy takes a timeout. You're watching High School Tournament Volleyball on WOSN. Our scoreboard today is brought to you by Lee's Famous Rescue Chicken, located in Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. 
Oakville operated please is not just famous for chicken we're famous for catering too and mr bowen for sweet tea sweet tea <laughs> there you go mommy had it down to nine eight and then shawnee goes on a four zero run coach van that with the timeout very appropriate timeout again it only works if you can sell it by buying a point here and that's what mommy's got to do here with her backs against the wall in set number three. Burris has served three of those four points that Dave mentioned, and she just served again. That's hit. Long. 14-8. That was one of those when you're the R1, you look around to see if anybody had a touch, and nobody did. And so Burris will get to serve again, her fifth serve. They teach you to be patient, don't they, as oh, an official absolutely. up there on the ladder? Set. Hutchins hits. She does so to green. Burris will set, and she will set Hutchins again. And both line judges say in. It's 15-8. When you're on that R1 stand, you look at all three of your partners, both line judges and your R2, to make sure nobody has a touch before you make a call. That's what you're talking about when you talk about your patience, Dave. Yeah, take your time, but yep. not like an NFL officials committee yeah. meeting after every call. <laughs> Here's a set for Hutchins. She just has to poke it over. And that ball was hit. Oh, we got a Shawnee Indian in the net. So that run will come to an end on the service by Sidney Burris. You know what drives me nuts about football officials? They all wear headsets. <laughs> and they still have to get together to talk. <laughs> Just use your headset and talk to the guy, will you? Well, again, a lot of those guys are as old as, as us, well, and technology is not our friends at times. Well, Hutchins out of the middle. Makes it 16-9. That was well done. The pass was good. The set was good. And obviously the kill was the, the accumulating point of that one. Yeah, you take that one right there, Mark. Yeah. Clip it and show it at Little Indians Volleyball Camp this summer. Perfect bump set spike. And the double deuces for Carly Hutchins, 22 kills. Sammy Reddick served that one. And then we get a block at the net by Addie Kriegel. 17-9. And 20, we're waiting for yeah. the ball to win into the <laughs> lobby. Now we have two balls here. Okay. Yeah, but when the ball, we got a hot one now. This ball we're winning yeah, with. We'll, yeah, we'll keep stay that with one. it. Yeah, stay with it. Float serve. Oh, good diving stop there by Crick by Green. Yes. She made a really nice play on that ball. Here's Carly Hutchins, and her shot rolls across the top of the net, and Maumee will take service back at 17-10. I think Carly would like to have that one back. Again, she has had a lot of swings tonight. I'm not going to say she's fatigued in any sense of the word, but that one just looked like she wasn't quite in rhythm. Kennedy King served, and Hutchins uh, is blocked. Yeah. Draper was there, so was Brianna Lanky, and between the two of them, they hit it out of bounds, 18-10. Carly was in rhythm that time. <laughs> Here's Maggie Jordan to serve. At 18-10. Yeah. That you was, saw that one, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I did. You could just see when that left shoulder dipped that she was not going to be able to legally contact the ball, and that's what happened. It's 19-10 now, Shawnee trying to put set three away. Well, Coach Vanette take another timeout here. They are definitely in the Kenny Loggins danger zone. Hutchins. She hit that one to Wagner, and that's blocked. Good play at the net by that time by Brickner. Kwiatkowski with a another great one. play. Yeah. yeah. This has been an interesting point. Yes, great volley. Burris will set Hutchins. And the pass, unable to control the ball. The pass is long. It's 20 to 10, Shawnee. Great volley, but that's where volleys go to die tonight. Number three, Carly Hutchins. Number three in your program, and this has been her playground tonight. We've just all been privileged to be able to watch it. Serve is short. Media timeout. We're going to take a break. You're watching High School Volleyball on WOSN.
We're back at Shawnee. Maumee trails 20 to 11, but they just got an ace. Not many of those, Dave, by either team this evening. If you're a Maumee Panther fan, that was a good time to get one from Sidney Janot. 46 on the season for Janot. Set, Hutchins, back set, long. It is 20 to 13 now. Again, I think we had a great view of that one right there. Carly should have went corner pocket on that one instead of down the line with where the ball was placed. Didn't quite work out for her, went long. And there's an ace. Good here. service run right here. Yes. If you're going to go down, go down swinging. And Sydney Janot is serving with tenacity back there. A lot of velocity on her serve. And she got it in. That's an ace. Shawnee thinking it was head out and heading out of bounds, decided to let it fall, and it did not fall out. It fell on the inside. And by doing so, the lead is cut to five at 20 to 15. You I can see that. Coach Hutchins was yeah. thinking about using a timeout for the first time tonight. She's not going to. The wheels were turned over there, weren't yes. they? Yeah. She wanted to say, let's play one more point. And when things are going bad, <laughs> hit the ball to set the ball for Carly Hutchins, and it's 21 now, 15. 25th kill on the night. And Carly will head back to serve. Not only has she served well this evening, but then she's done a good job of attacking from behind the 10-foot line when she's been in this spot. Draper, roll shot. Burris will set Upshaw off two blockers. Good attempt by Kwiatkowski, but unable to keep it in play. It's 22-15. 11th kill on the night for Upshaw. They have set over here this side to Brook uh, to uh, Carly Hutchins behind the 10-foot line so many times. It kind of surprised them yes, to go cross yes. court that time. Mm -hmm. Good serve. Draper gets it blocked at the net by Brickner. And be a legal contact makes it 23-15. Here's Shawnee, two points away from a sectional championship, moving to the districts. 23-16. Here comes Taryn Pyle in, and Dave, I'm going to bet Taryn Pyle has been a JV player all year. She was not on their regular season roster, was added for the tournament, and that would just be my guess. Get those young girls some experience. Let them taste this a little Whoa. bit. What might be the best pass set spike of the night for one Gianna Upshaw makes it 24-16. That could not have been done any better. Yeah, I think Upshaw told Sidney Burris, hey, I'm going to take you out to eat. Uh, set me up. You're giving them all to Carly. Show me some love as well. She did right there, and Upshaw, she hit that one extremely well. Emily McKissick trying to close it out. But Maumee keeps it alive. Here's the pass. Kill attempt. That one was saved. Blocked by Draper. Good point that time for the Maumee Panthers at 24-17. Draper's fifth kill on the night. And again, down 24-17. Mommy, they get that point, the excitement and everything. That's what high school sports, that's what they're about yeah. right there. Just keep fighting. Kirsten Green will serve. Overpass. That hit by the, to the back row by Brickner. And then tipped over. Hutchins makes a dive for it. Tipped over by Burris. Set, back set Hutchins. And the joust at the net will be won by Maumee as it goes off the hand of an Indian, makes it 24-18. The joust at the net, Mr. Shine. I love that line right there. Love That's that. exactly what it was. Joust is an official volleyball term, Dave. Nice. Oh, and going right down the line and putting this set away was Liz Kinnear. She got a great set, put that one away, and Shawnee We'll take set number three of this match, 25-18. Dave, and they move on to the districts next week. Yeah, Shawnee comes in, Coach Hutchins' squad. They're playing at home, and they didn't take advantage of that. They came out, and they played with focus and determination. They didn't care who their opponent was tonight. They wanted to really set tone. They did so at the beginning of each set. 
maybe a little law in a couple sets in the middle, but boy, did they finish strong. They are your sectional champions champion and they are going to move on to the district semis. The Maumee Panthers will see their season end. They will finish with a record of 9-14. and 14. They were 7-7 seven and seven in the Northern Buckeye Conference. The Shawnee Indians, they will move to 17-6. and six. They were 8-1 and one in the Western Buckeye League. They will play the winner of our next match, either Wapak or Salina. That will be in Kaleida on Tuesday the 22nd of October at 6 p.m. The finals in that particular district are on Thursday night, also in Kaleida at 6 p.m. I want to thank our two sponsors this evening. That's been Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken and Wapak Canetta Ford. We want to thank Megan Sherrick, who did some serious scrambling with our audio <laughs> issues. Yes, Dave, and yes. got it all accomplished. Megan took care of us here at Shawnee, and we'll take this back to the station and edit it all together. Shawnee, a three-set victor tonight. Scores of 25-17, 25-15, and 25-18. They move on to the district. You've been watching High School Tournament Volleyball on WOSN.